Today we're going to talk about uh, an interesting experience that two designers have had in healthcare designers that have actually been uh, patients and have learned a lot about um, how to do design better, perhaps, uh, as, as a result of being patients. They are Pam Maynard, C uh, CID. Pam's uh, been with HMC Architects out in California for, for a long time. And uh, Bruce Nepper, president of BK Facility Consulting in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, Bruce has had experience uh, for many years with uh, uh, companies like Burt Hill and Stantec uh, in healthcare. So we've got two veteran designers here and each of them has had a, a medical experience or, or more over the last uh, few years and uh, been kind of, um, kind of uh, shall we say, uh, upset a little bit about it. So Pam, tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about what happened when you had to go into, into the hospital and what, what your initial response was. Well, you know, being a designer, I was always focused on the aesthetics of the yeah. environment. And as I became the patient, I realized that aesthetics, while they are so important in natural daylighting and color and view and art and all of that, I really realized that the most important aspect was how staff treated me. And staff became stressed when materials management was out of whack and operational flow was not working. Tell me what you, you mean by what aspect of materials management, not being able to get supplies? Yes. Mm -hmm. So many times a nurse couldn't find something and got frustrated or a doctor couldn't find something and then he had to leave the room and then she found the wrong item mm -hmm. and then that delayed the process and they became frustrated. Yeah. Well, well then, then you as the patient, because yeah. I had the same experience, Go ahead, Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. you start to wonder like, well, if you can't find that left-handed injection, <laughs> yeah. what yeah. am I doing here? Yeah. And of course the nurses are the most important thing. I, my daughter's a nurse practitioner and you know, God bless them all. You know, they're, they're just, the, they're, they really run the hospital, don't they? Yeah. And, and if yes. you can't get to that, to that device or to that uh, instrument or to that supply, as you say, what else? There was operational flow, something about operational flow, Pam? Well, uh, operational flow has to do with being at the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. And it has to do with materials being at the right place at the right time. Yeah. staff being at the right place at the right time and patients being at the right place at the right time. Yeah. And I think we have a long way to go in that respect because yeah. that also caused stress for mm -hmm. the staff and for myself. And, and we know these, these, you know, the typical nurse, what is it, Bruce, something like five to seven miles on every eight oh. to 12 hour uh, tour of duty. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's, it's they exhausting. They usually walk that. Yeah if, they, yeah. if they were trying to get her 10,000 steps, nurses get them. Yeah. And, and you know, but, the average nurse, not the average, because they're not average. None of them is average. They're like Lake Wobegon. They're all above average. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the average nurse is 48 to 52 years old at best. Uh, you know, so, I mean, this is, a, this is a tough thing. Bruce, tell us about your, your experience and, and y y your, your anxieties uh, about I've, I've about had. That. I've had a couple surgeries. All of them are outpatient, mm -hmm. uh, very fortunate. Um, but like Pam, it's like you don't choose to get up in the morning and go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. I'd rather choose and get up and go play golf, go skiing, go to my wood shop, something. Um, but you end up there, and the first thing you kind of feel is like someone else is now in control of me. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you've, as the designer, whether, you know, whatever you've done, if you've made it hard for them, well, then you're, you know, like Pam says, the way it looks is very important, um, but the way it operates is um, much more, much more important. Because yeah, yeah. if the nurses have, can find everything and the docs can find everything and get it to you, then you're there less time. Mm -hmm. And the most common thing of every patient that, that they want, they want to be home. They want to leave. Yeah. This is the last Hospital place I want to be. Improved, but no one wants to stay for a hospital dinner. But, but the other thing is people, patients want to know what's going on. Yes. Mo I mean, most 99% of patients. There are yes. some patients who just, you know, just whatever, you know, but I mean. I want to know when I'm going right, to, my procedure start, when are you going to be done? 
Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. When is the anesthesiologist coming to see me? Uh -huh. You know, I want to know uh -huh. why are you writing on my so and so? Uh -huh. You know, yeah. oh, that's so you make sure when I get in there, you do the right piece. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, oh, I I check my I make sure they initial uh, any oh. body part of mine that they could work on. Uh, Pam, you you had a you had a a terrible experience with toilets. Tell us about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, when I had uh, rate radiation. You know, you have to go every day, five days a week to have the radiation. And it, it was in the, the basement. And when I walked in, uh, there was a beautiful painting, but they had all the chairs facing uh, in, in front of the painting facing two toilets. <laughs> and all we did was see people come in and out of the toilet. Oh, boy. <laughs> and I often see that sometimes architects like to put toilets we we put toilets and and we say oh they, they need to be obvious how to get an in and out of the toilet well there's other ways to do wayfinding than just have the doors in front of you you can have a sign and then in front of you you could have you know artwork or something that's a little bit more enjoyable than watching people come in and out of the toilet but you know it, it's interesting uh uh that a painting. I mean, we, we we hear a lot from healthcare designers like you too that you know, lighting, color, uh, artwork, um, views of nature, etc., are so important. Uh, and yet, um, often we get kind of a uh, just a flat surface, or or even worse, a kind of an ugly thing to look at. And that's that's really a really a problem. Um, I understand you you had. You, <laughs> this this amuses me. I mean, in, in a weird way, because you had a great experience in in radiation therapy. <laughs> well, again, it was because of staff. So somehow that unit had their act together, and every day I would walk in, they would be happy. They had loud music. They were telling jokes. It, it wasn't like me going in and they were saying, "Oh, we feel sorry for you." Yeah. No, they were upbeat. And <laughs> Did course, they know you by name when you walked in? Yeah. Wasn't oh. that nice? Yeah. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And yes. the room itself and the machine is very intimidating, but there you go with the artwork. I laid down with all of that other positive reinforcement. I looked up and there was this beautiful piece of backlit artwork. It was like someplace out of Hawaii. Yeah. And, you know, that helped because you can focus. Yeah. And I think they kind of pretend you're yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, there's a, you know, there's a company in, uh, in Iowa that, that makes those that are, they're, they're, yeah, people say uh, that it makes, it makes you feel, Bruce, did you find this? You know, well, it, there's, it, there's, I think there's, there's two things. There yeah. are some designers who, and excuse me, but they'll turn up their noses at things like that. Uh -huh. People say, well, that's not art. That's not this. But it provides the distraction. Yes. Yeah. But what I liked about what Pam said was, and it wasn't like, un, you know, uh, my experiences, because I was going to my clients' hospitals uh -huh. in both these cases. When you walk in and the nurses say, oh, look who's here. You know, <laughs> while there's a little bit of jesting going on, being known mm -hmm. and not just like something, it, it made it um, less bad. You know, knowing that you weren't going to be, you know, by the time you went home that night, you weren't going to feel so good, but something would be fixed. Uh -huh. But having that staff know you and acknowledge you and help you through this, I think is very important. You know, uh, I remember we did some stuff on, on uh, pediatric facilities uh, and the concept of distraction was, uh, mm -hmm. was often, you know, you mentioned your, your sky view, Pam. And uh, just, you know, a feeling, you know, Bruce has got an Ans Ansel Adams uh, ph photography. We, we all respond, you know, I respond to my picture of Paris uh, in, in 1955. We all respond to artwork and beautiful things and views of nature. I mean, it, I mean it's kind of, it's kind of, you know, touchy-feely, but it, it, I, patients, I think it works for them, doesn't it? Bruce, Pam? I, I, I think it works. For the patients, but remember, the patients are there for a short period of time. Uh -huh. You know, it's the staff. Like Pam went into a place, and the staff was upbeat. They were happy. 
that had to be a well-designed unit. They had things in there that, because the staff are down in a radiation vault all day. Yeah. They don't see daylight for the most part. Very few of them get much daylight. Um, and so to create an environment that supports the staff to do what they do, you know, because they see patients who are going to be successful and they see some that quite frankly aren't. Yeah. And it's yeah. very stressful. Well, and, and, you know, of course, things are even tougher right now with what's going on in, in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, let's, let's, uh, uh, you know, let, let's take, I'm going to ask you to take a, a kind of a, a deep breath and think, what can I tell my colleagues out there? in healthcare design that will help them not make a big mistake next time or something that will help them really improve their projects. Pam, you want to take a shot at that? What's, what's something that, they, that you would advise? Well, I always hear patient-centered care. Yeah. And patient-centered care. But oftentimes we forget about the staff. I mm -hmm. rarely hear staff-centered care as well. And um, boy, staff, staff really need to be taken care of. Things Absolutely. like maybe a staff lounge, you know, with a, with a window. Um, oftentimes I see them tucked in a dark corner in the center core of a nursing wing. Yeah. Um, so paying more attention to staff because they're there every day. And like Bruce said, sometimes as a patient, we come in and out. But really, staff staff needs to be better taken care of. They they may, they may be there to eight to twelve hours, working through the night. I mean, it's yeah. it's tough and conditions. And we're really seeing it now. We're oh. really seeing it now. Yeah. So that that would be my my message is don't mm. forget about the staff. Take Excellent. care of them. Excellent, Bruce. What, I what, mean, what if, do you if, think? If I could underscore what Pam said and put exclamation marks and fireworks around it. It's true. If the staff are happy, the patient care will happen. Mm -hmm. The quality metrics will be achieved. The patient satisfactions will be achieved. You know, all of those other things that the administration and the board wants and the patient wants will happen. You know, um, the wonderful backless gown, somewhere some staff's going to figure that out someday. But if you take care of the staff, do your design work knowing that it's a your first goal is to function. Mm -hmm. Can the nurses, can the techs, can the housekeepers? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. All of those different people make the place function well. Right. And then once you get that worked out, then you're going to, you know, then you're going to work on making it look good, look mm -hmm. nice, look wonderful. You know, make, um, the, make the board feel happy. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, make th it this serviceable. is serviceable. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Bruce. Yeah. This, this has been great. Um, we're going to put up, a couple of uh, links here. One is to a, a video that uh, features uh, Pam and some of her colleagues at HMC Architects and uh, uh, a blog that Bruce did a few years ago when he was at Stantec that we've, we've had on bdcnetwork.com. So um, that'll be useful to our audience. So I wanna thank Pam Maynard uh, from HMC Architects uh, for her time today and uh, for joining us with Bruce Nepper, president of BK Facility Consulting in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, been great to talk to you, a lot of fun, and um, I think we've uh, accomplished some, um, some valuable uh, uh, consulting here. Thank you. It's been great, thank you. Thank you.